Hello, good evening, and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu. I just had a few technical issues, and uh, sorry about the delay in starting. Today, we are going to try and conclude the series that we've been doing on women empowerment. We have a special guest in the house today uh, who will really help us especially looking at the topic that we'll be talking about today regarding uh, along the line of this this, this uh, series that we've been running uh, i'm sure it has been a blessing to a lot of us i have learned a lot in the process i have uh, been exposed to a lot of things that uh, maybe I, I knew a little bit about it but i've come to know more uh, some i didn't know at all i have learned them either by preparing for the programs or from the various various special guests that we've had over the over the weeks that have been doing this but tonight i'm excited about the guest that we have in the house because uh he's gonna really do justice to this this topic because it is something that is of great interest to her it is her passion, it's something that she's actively uh, uh, greatly involved with and doing and leading and teaching and, and helping a lot of people, especially in the area of empowerment and development. So tonight we have with us on the program, Dr. Mrs. Dotonolo Gwenbi. But before I bring on our guests as usual, just want to say a few words about the series itself about women empowerment. Somebody asked me during the week, why am I, why am I talking a lot and doing a lot of programs on this topic uh, on women empowerment? And I said, well, it is something that is long overdue. We can't say enough of it. So every opportunity to talk about it, to highlight it, to explain it, should be taken seriously. And that is why I am doing what I'm doing. So uh, just in case you think uh, there is more to it, well, there isn't. That's just what it is. It's long overdue, and we're going to do it. On top of the many apps that women wear in the house, looking after the home, looking after the family, managing the affairs of the husband, the children, and in most cases to the detriment of herself, you will, you will think the world, especially the, the male in the world, will, will recognize this effort and therefore give women all the support and, and, and encouragement that they need. But experience and research and, and studies have shown that despite all of this, women are still not empowered. The most talented of men weren't even close to being able to fulfill their potentials because of gender inequality. Because when you look back at history, Sex Disqualification Act of 1919 was when women started being given the opportunity to exert themselves to, to involve themselves because many uh, common laws were, re were removed that were kind of a restriction to women's uh, progress. But even with that, even with that, the world still have a, 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 a very narrow view of the role, the place, the importance, the, the benefit, the advantage that women bring into the world. And that has hampered the world at large. And the truth is, men, we have been the worst off for not empowering our women. And so tonight we have with us Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Ologmebi. And she's going to be telling us some things to do, especially with women and entrepreneurship, which is what we'll be looking at on tonight's program. But let me quickly tell you one or two things about Mrs. Dr. About Dr. Logan B. 
She is the president and the founder of Bumit Nima Preneurship uh, uh, Organization, which focuses on helping Christians in the areas of ministry of business startups and growth. Immediately, you can see the entrepreneurship flavor in that. The, the, all, the, the organization also focuses on building and mentoring entrepreneurs in identifying new frontiers, in maturing in areas of excellence and expansion and growth and development. She also conducts training and coaching in biblical and management principles, especially for Christian businesses and ministries. Dr. Logwebi is also the managing director of Doxin, Doxin Time Training. I hope I'm pronouncing it well which focuses on designing and delivering training programs for organizations, conducting training needs analysis, professional and academic tutoring. They also design and develop induction programs, meeting facilitation, performance coaching, personal and professional enhancement. And on that note, it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto tonight's broadcast. Dr. Mrs. Dr. Olog, maybe. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on this program tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, thank you for all that you and your family, how you have encouraged me and, and supported me and, and really challenged me at the beginning of all of this. And I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're very welcome. Thank yes, you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, ma'am, maybe you want, maybe I didn't do a good introduction. It's better to hear it from you. So you want to tell us about yourself and then let's hear what you have for us tonight, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, good evening, dear viewers. Um, my name is Olu Dotun. Um, I'm a wife and a mother of four, so two boys and two girls, to the glory of God. And um, I hold a PhD. <laughs> I hold a PhD in business um, administration and a chartered administrator. Um, so I focus so much on helping um, people start their business. Or if you have um, small to medium-sized businesses and um, you want um, strategic planning, you want to plan on growth and expansion. So I deal with that a lot. And to the glory of God, I have taught in many colleges and universities on business management, um, strategic marketing, how do you promote your product? But my passion basically is on helping people um, identify their skills, their talents, their gifts, and then turning these gifts into profitable ventures. You know, because a lot of people have talent. But many people don't even know that they have this gift or talent in them. Yet they go out every day. They just, you know, they go to work and they're not happy with the work they do. Monday money is always um, a day not to look forward to because they're not happy with their daily life, their daily, their means of livelihood. So my passion is to help people um, discover who they are, discover your talents, and then you can turn these talents to profitable ventures. At the end of the day, you will be happy, and then you'll be able to help people. So um, that is who I am, and I basically train Christian um, believers on Christian entrepreneurship. But I've taught a lot of people, I've mentored and coached a lot of people on secular businesses as well. So just that's, that's just that's just who I am. Thank you. Thank you so much, so ma'am. Um, I have been I have been a follower of not just your your work but also your ministry because sometimes uh, people can go away with the impression that that is the only area that you that you are involved with. Can you tell us briefly about your ministry itself. Um, thank you very much, sir. Um, the ministry is called uh, Numerpreneurship Ministry. 
and the organization is Domin's International Christian Center for Numa Partnership. Um, what, Numa, what we do uh, with the Numa Partnership Ministry, as the word Numa Partnership is, is a new word. And I know a lot of people have asked me, what does it mean? And it means, you know, Numa, Numa Partnership is a combination of two words, Numa and Partnership. Numa is a Greek word for spirit or inspiration or, I mean, um, understanding. And um, in Christendom, we've adopted Numa for, to, to stand for the Holy Spirit. So, prenorship is taken from entrepreneurship, which is the process, the creative process of turning an idea into a product or service. That is, you identify a gap in the market, there is a need you've seen in the community, and you have skills or talents that can meet those needs. So, when you combine Numa, uh, numa and, um, and entrepreneurship, you find Numa Prenorship. And so we say Numa Prenorship is the creative process through which um, an idea is inspired and coordinated by the Holy Spirit. And this idea translates into a product or service that meets people's needs. And when you have this product or service, you can, the Holy Spirit can also inspire you to, I mean, to translate it into either a business or ministry set up for the common good. So as an entrepreneur, I mean, that is the bedrock. You're coming from the entrepreneurship point of view. An entrepreneur is someone who innovates, who initiates um, a business. But the major thing with an entrepreneur, the reason why we, we say an entrepreneur is different from a numerpreneur, um, from a business person is because an entrepreneur or a numerpreneur does not start the business basically because of money. But he starts the business because he, has, he or she has identified uh, a gap in the market and need for that which he wants to provide for the people. And so the, 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 the motivation is not just the money. There is profit, yes, because either you are starting business or ministry, God expects you to profit. And that is why he says, I am the Lord that teaches you how to profit. But the main goal is not just the money. The main goal is to benefit people. And so when you start to benefit people, you see that profit start to come in. So that is what this ministry does. We train people. We help people to identify their gifts, their talents. We help people to innovate and to turn their innovation to creativity because it's not just enough for you to innovate. You, mm -hmm. what, What's the idea you have? You have to think of what to create with it. And that is the process of creativity. And at the same time, we teach you how to profit with what you have created. So you benefit people, you benefit yourself. So that is what the Ministry of Numa Partnership does. And so we train, we organize seminars, conferences, one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. And we have an institute that we run, where we run courses uh, periodically to build these Numa Partnership principles in people. And we also train churches, um, church workers, Christian leaders, ministry leaders, pastors, senior pastors. So that is what the Ministry of Numa Partnership is all about. Thank you. Wow. You see, if I didn't probe, we wouldn't have gotten all of that out of you. Uh, as you know, we, we've been running this series. <laughs> we've been running this series on women empowerment. Okay. And it's been going on for maybe about six to eight weeks. And we've had various guests on the program. Now we have you. And the area that we, we would like you to talk to us about is the entrepreneurship aspect and how that relates to or how what is what the correlation is between entrepreneurship and women empowerment and how women can be empowered or how women are empowered through entrepreneurship. So you want me to take it off from there, sir? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's all yours you. now. I'm just <laughs> gonna come in every now and again, but now it's okay. all yours. Okay, okay. Um, I think you've touched a very core <laughs> core aspect of my life. Because um, part of our ministry, there's a term we call Titus 2, 3, 4, 5 models. And um, the Titus 2, 3, 4, 5 models are targeted at women. 
women um, and we run conferences basically to motivate women to be entrepreneurs. You know, because we know women, we are so loaded. And um, I always say to women, God has called us helpers. And there are only two people in the Bible. Would I say people or two categories of people that the Bible refers to as helpers? The Holy Spirit and women. And what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit encourages us, motivates us, helps us. The Bible calls him a strengthener, a standby, a motivator. And so the Bible also calls women a helper. The Bible says, I will provide a help meet for him. And so when you call someone a helper, I always say to women, when you call someone a helper, a helper is usually stronger than the helped. Because if the, oh, if, I mean, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't need help, you wouldn't call someone to come and help you. So yeah. when women begin to understand the purpose of a woman, that you are a helper, then you will know that you are not supposed to be a liability to your husband or a, a liability to the community. A helper is usually strong. A helper can multitask. So a helper can be a mother, like a God has equipped women to be mothers, to be wives, to be community um, women, to do so many things. But at the same time, there is no how you can adequately help if there is nothing you are bringing on the table. If your children cannot look at you and say, yes, I thank God I have this woman as my mother. Or your husband cannot look at you and say, yes, I thank God I have this woman as my wife. And what we bring you to that point, if you look at Proverbs 31 in the Bible, Proverbs 31, woman, some people say, can, does this woman exist? I can say 100%, yes, this type of woman exists. But if you see what brought her to that level, the Bible says towards the end, said her husband is known at the gate. What makes the husband to be known at the gate is because this woman, he has entrepreneurial capabilities. This woman is an entrepreneur. The Bible says she considers a feed and buys it. She is a merchant. She buys goods from her farm. She, she, she makes use of it. She's very, she's highly innovative and creative. And she's, she's someone that can be depended on. So she's not a lazy woman. And she's not a woman that does not believe in the capacity that God has given to her. And so when you are now talking about entrepreneurship and women, God has created women naturally to be entrepreneurs. But it depends on how a woman views it. Because we see that the society, you know, has, has turned the tables around. You see women depending so much on their husbands. Some women, immediately they get married. In fact, they're always looking for a type of man they can marry that will put food on the table, that will do everything. But I always say to women, it's good, yes, you get married, yes, you have kids. But one day you want your children, the Bible says, our children rise up and call her blessed. If your, womb, if your children are going to call you blessed, then it must be that you are contributing so much to their lives and to the community. And that can only be done through the entrepreneurship route. So women are to become, women are to be entrepreneurs. And when we are talking about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship or the process of entrepreneurship, I said, it involves a process of sitting down, looking at your community, looking at the gap in the society, looking at how you can meet needs in the society. Let me tell you, when you open your eyes very well, there are needs all around you that you can turn to, to profitable ventures. So when a woman that does not eat the food of idleness that looks at the society, what can I do? Not just my children. For the Bible has called a woman, the Bible says, when the Lord created a woman, Adam looked at the woman and called her Eve. What is the meaning of Eve? The mother of all living things. That is the meaning of Eve. And you cannot be the mother of all if you are not an entrepreneur. If you are not somebody that knows how to turn one to two or two to four, how to, how to multiply, you know what you have. Because God calls women as, you know, we are incubators. We innovate. We are to multiply whatever is given to us. So it is a great encouragement of women to become entrepreneurs. And the process of it is not just 
going to school or thinking is a it's a big problem you know how am i going to be a business person how am i going to be an entrepreneur do i have to have an mba do i have to go to school do i no it starts from you it starts from looking at your environment and looking at what you can do to contribute to the needs of the people around you and so once you identify needs i can say to you that there is when your eyes goes towards a particular need god has already equipped you with the skills and the capacity the gift the talent that can meet those needs because for instance now when i meet people the first area i concentrate on i mean i'm not someone i'm not a social person I'm, I'm not that social, but when I meet people, the first question I want to ask them is, what are you doing? What's, what, what, I mean, what's your career? What's your occupation? And the next question is, are you happy with what you're doing? And then the next question is, do you think this is the right route for you, the right direction? Or do, or do, you, do, do you think this is your purpose in life? The reason why I'm asking all these questions is for me to be able to help this person. That is my that is my what would I say? My motivation in life, that's my purpose, to help everyone identify their special gifts and talents and turn these to profitable ventures. That is a need in the society that I'm trying to meet. Because wherever you get to, since I started this ministry, I have met a lot of people. In fact, I've gone to Nigeria, I've gone to the US. I've met a lot of people and I know that these questions I ask them is, is general. Everybody wants to find out the right thing to do in life. So that is a basic need. And God, by his spirit, has allowed me to be able to identify these needs in people's lives and to be able to meet those needs. Now, when I was doing this as a business, when you come to me as, uh, as a business consultant, you come to me, I provide advice to you. I help you. To, I mean, to actualize your dreams, to turn your dreams, your business dreams to reality, then I charge you. That has become an entrepreneurship venture for me. And that is why I'm saying that there is no one that God has not given, you know, special capabilities, skills, talents, and gifts to. But look at the areas that your eyes or your heart always go to. For instance, where you meet people, or you go to a particular place, what do you normally notice? What needs motivate you? What, what are the areas of your passion? What are those things that do not allow you to sleep? What are those needs you want to meet in the society? I want to say to you as a woman, once you identify that, then there are skills and gifts in you that God has imputed, God has put inside of you. And these gifts can help you create those needs or turn those needs into products or services that can help people in life. And let me tell you, when you start to meet needs, people start to pay for what you are giving to them. And the more they pay for it, they are satisfied that their needs are being met. You are also satisfied that in meeting needs, you are also recompensed. You are rewarded. There's a harvest coming back to you. That is the process of entrepreneurship. And that is why I believe that every woman ought to be an entrepreneur. I'm not talking about business, my business alone, because entrepreneurship is not just about business. Entrepreneurship stems from the fact that you want to meet needs in the society. And once you know how to meet needs, that is when you come to the process of being celebrated. And when you are celebrated, people start to buy what you're selling. That is where entrepreneurship starts from. And in entrepreneurship, you always say to people, you might not go into business, but you might go into maybe charity or you, charitable ventures. You might go into ministry. But even if you are going into ministry, that is still entrepreneurship because you, there is a creative process you are going through. That creative process is helping you to turn ideas to products that can meet needs. But at the end of the day, you are paid or you are compensated for what you are giving to people. So it is important for women to stand up, not thinking of who will meet my needs, but how can I meet the needs of the people? Like I will give you an instance. I went to Nigeria sometimes, I think two, three years ago. 
and I was um, delivering a lecture to a group of people. They, were, they are Christians. And then I was saying to them, I said, all of you, most of you, you always pray for this. Say, Lord, send me a helper. Lord, a helper of destiny. Send me a helper. We are constantly praying for this. And I said, why don't you change your prayer today and say, Lord, make me a helper unto others. I said, you will see the rate, the speed at which God will answer your prayer. Instead of saying, God send me. So you are constantly looking for a helper. And then you are sitting down expecting when the helper will come to you. But you are not opening your eyes to see, okay, how can I help people? That is the spirit of entrepreneurship. And so, well, when you, that is the starting point. I don't know if you want me to continue because that is the starting point. Identifying needs and looking for ways to turn these needs into products or services that can help people. But there is a process involved in that, which might be, you know, a business process. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I think there are two things that you, you, you touched on, and I just want us to, to circle back on that. Mm. Every time people talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, yeah. they talk about her being a virtuous woman. And in most cases, what they're referring to is her dealings with, with herself, her husband, and her children. Mm. But you just mentioned now that part of what makes well, part of the reason why she's regarded to as a virtuous woman is also because of her entrepreneurship skills. Mm. She finds a field and she buys it. Mm. She buys goods and she sells goods. Mm. That, for me, especially for, for Christians, how can we help Christians especially women, and because we're talking about women, how can we help them to see beyond the issue of this virtuous woman's dealing on how she carries herself, how she behaves, how she relates to her family and, and husband, but also extend that now to this aspect of her life that is seemingly unnoticed or untouched. How, what's the, how do we break people into that next stage? Thank you very much, sir. Um, you will see because I'm more entrepreneurial in nature, I will notice that in her more than other aspects that people, you know, concentrate on. For instance, if you look at that Proverbs 31, a lot is said about, uh, how would I say, about um, how to put productivity rather than the wifely qualities. A lot is said about her, her productivity, her fruitfulness, her profitability, and it is important that that well, that is one of the reasons why God God is raising women today. I thank God for many women I come across in my journey, my speaking engagements, going to conferences. I've come across women who are now seeing womanhood to be much more than just sitting at home, you know, um, giving back to children being the homely, homely woman. Because I know you can be homely. You can give back to children. You can do all your wifely duties. But your husband will not be thrown at the gate. Because if we look at the sequence of the Proverbs 31 woman, her husband was known at the gate not because of the food she was cooking in the kitchen. Her husband was known at the gate not because she was a humble woman. This woman was a contributor. To your husband's life. That that's the reason why the husband was not. In fact, <laughs> I went to a, a, I was at a conference one day, and then this debate on the Proverbs 31 woman or discussion on the Proverbs 31 woman ensued, and then the women were saying that her husband was constantly sitting at the gate, and <laughs> some men <laughs> and some men said, well, her husband was sitting at the gate representing her well. Then some men said, well, her husband was sitting at the gate because he was one of the um, one of the chiefs. Of the village. One chiefs of the place. You know, women were just... Because unless you sit down with the Proverbs 31 woman and see before you can be called a virtuous woman, the Bible says she does not eat the bread of idleness. If you look at the process very well, somebody considering a field for you to even identify that there is a field 
that you want to buy. And then the Bible says she considers a field and buys it. Buying a field. Or the Bible says she orders her merchandise from afar. That means she's she is an exporter or importer, whatever you, you want to call it. This woman was a real, real businesswoman. Okay, let's look at it. For you to consider a field and buy it, do you get that from pocket money that your husband gives to you? You know, because the, if you rely solely on what your husband gives to you as pocket money, when you see field, you will just be envying people who see field, who buy fields. And for somebody to say, okay, I want to import. The Bible says she imports, she, she buys her goods from afar. So to be an importer means that you have money, means that you have savings. You have, uh, what would I call, e um, income, or maybe capital. Let me use the word capital. And for you to even identify what type of goods can I buy from afar, then you must be a smart woman. So the, the what makes the virtuous woman complete is the entrepreneurial side. And I will say that in women conferences or women gathering, or even we mothers, we need to do more. We need to put in more effort in putting entrepreneurial spirit into our daughters. Not just... Uh oh What's going on? To be women, to be smart women, to be women who think on their feet, to be women who knows how to turn 100 pounds to 200 pounds, who knows how to contribute to the society. And through your contribution, your husband can become popular. The husband, too, is not a lazy husband. You know, I, I bet, you know, but at least the woman, for your husband to be known, the Bible says behind every successful man, there is a woman, not a lazy woman. Not a woman, not, not a sit-at-home woman. That is why we need a lot of training, a lot of, a lot of uplifting for our women. Even in churches, when we organize women conferences or women meetings, it shouldn't be just about, you know, uh, prayer meeting for our children alone, you know, because I see a lot of uh, programs are to, towards a prayer meeting for children, prayer meeting for husband. No, no, no. It shouldn't be that alone. There must be a lot of training going on to educate women on especially discovering the purpose of a woman. As the Lord told me like three years ago, when, I, when he gave me the ministry of the title of five models, he said, I want to tell you, sit down, I want to tell you the reason why I made a woman. And I used that in a conference to train women on the purpose of a woman. So your purpose, though your purpose is to multiply, your purpose is to be an incubator, to multiply. But what are you multiplying? Are you multiplying laziness? That's why you find girls. My daughter came home one day and was telling me that, uh, you know, some girls in the school, they were saying that by the time they do the GCSE, that would be it. They would just go home, get married, and have children. These are 16, 15, 16 year old girls. The reason is because their mothers have laid that pattern for them that as a woman, all you are good for is, you know, just by the time you get to secondary school, that's okay. Go and get married, you know, have children. That is it. But if the women that we celebrate today, the virtuous and the right, the virtuous woman, if all she did was to give back and then to cook, I don't think her name would have been mentioned <laughs> this way. Exactly. Because look at verse 10 of that Proverbs 31. Even from verse 1, you will see that it, it, the Proverbs 31 woman, the, her story came as a result of the advice that Nemuel's mother was giving to him as a king. The, the, the queen mother was giving an advice to his son, the king, and he said, this is the type of woman you should marry. And he said, and by the time you now go further, he began to enumerate the virtues of a good woman. And you see one of the key virtues there was the entrepreneurial spirit that must be found in every woman. So I think if our pulpits, our pastors, our Christian leaders, our leaders, everyone, even women leaders or men leaders, if we can rise up to begin to let women know that God has put so much in women. Helpers are supposed to be all-round helper, not just helping to put food on the table alone. Because even let me tell you these days, men can cook. So it's not just about food. <laughs> so if all you know is food, in fact, there was a time some people, some, I mean, a couple was fighting. And then they were fighting. I think they, they were talking about me. 
And then the husband was because the, the husband is a friend of my husband. And the husband was telling the wife, said, Can't you look at her? And she said, eh, but can she cook like me? The husband said, Are you the one that cooks for her husband? Okay, I don't want to eat food again. Stop <laughs> cooking for me. Go and do something else. You know, so the glory of God. So the life of a woman is much more than that. So if the, our pulpit can begin to direct attention towards training women in the art of entrepreneurship and also encouraging us that we are more than who the society say we are. And that's my passion, to see women become who God has created them to be a true helper indeed. So then we will see that the virtuous woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, will be, will, will be, will be accomplished in us by the grace of God. Excellent. During one of the previous sessions on this platform, on this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this series that, we, that we've done, one of the things that was highlighted was the issue of women, especially in the rural area, mm. having access to financial resources, uh, mm. bank account, financial empowerment, and all of that. In order for you to be an entrepreneur or to fund to operate as an entrepreneur, one of the things you will obviously need is capital for you mm. to start. And like you rightly said, you don't get that or you won't get that from the weekly allowance or monthly allowance or pocket money that your, your husband gives you. Now, in terms of where women are, uh, for instance, when I was preparing for this program, one of the things I picked up was most venture capitalists will rather invest in men-led Ventures and women, although that is beginning to change. In, in your opinion, what are some of the things that women can do to break into that to, to have access to such resources? What what can they do, or how can they go about it? All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, this is a very good question because um, in most of my classes or conferences have been asked this question that you talk about turning your dreams to reality you talk about you know turning gifts into profitable ventures and stuff like that what about finance you know and uh, let's start from the rural area it's even easier for a rural person because i'm going to give you a story the problem with many people is they look for big capital Hello, ma'am. Oh, oh. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear us? Oh, wow. I think we have connection issues. Uh, mm. Well, I think there's a connection issue from her side, but one of the things I, I found that when I was preparing, why we wait to wait for, for Dr. Logan to rejoin us. One of the things I found was this issue of discrimination that is prevalent, especially uh, when it comes to sourcing uh, capital or resources for women entrepreneurs. Uh, there was a research that was done in Sweden, which found out that the male entrepreneurs who raise funds 62% of the time, they receive over half of the money that they, they needed or they requested for, for their particular project. While women, on the other hand, who raise funds 48% of the time, only got a quarter of the money that they requested or that is needed. So the question I was asking, oh, she, uh, Dr. Logan is back with us. The question I was asking earlier on was, looking at this disparity between the, the, the ability to raise funds by men compared to women, what can our women do 
or what do they have to do? Or is it the men that needs to change so that we can be able to meet this uh, this gap? I'll bring uh, Dr. Logan back so that we can continue to enjoy her presence. Welcome back, Mama. I think there was a connection issue somewhere. Mama, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I don't. I don't know what happened. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It just, it just, it just, went it just, it just <laughs> froze you up. All right. Um. Sorry, viewers. Um. We don't know what happened. Yes. Okay. So as I was saying, um, you already have the idea, and then you have what I mean, the product that you want to sell. Don't wait until you have all, all the money to start to commence your, I mean, to turn your business idea to reality. Let me give you an instance. My mother, you know, um, when my father died and there was no source of income for her and then um, she tried all sort of, you know, so many things and nothing was working, you know. So eventually one day she got, I gave her 800 naira. That was like maybe over 20 years ago. I give out 800 naira as pocket money, just out of what I, out of my income. I just gave her the 800 naira to manage with. And then she was, she sat down one day, she was thinking. My younger brother told her and said, Mommy, instead of waiting for my sister to give you money every month, why don't you start something with this 800 naira? And then my, my mother said, 800 naira, what would that do? That is not even enough to feed us in a week. Talk less of status. And my younger brother, though he was very young then, he said, Mommy, anything, just start anything with it. And then she took the 800 naira. It was very, very significant. But she took it to um, Obafemi Awolowo University and she got some bread, you know, um, fresh bread. And she started to sell. At least 800 naira was enough to buy bread. To buy them, so she yeah. started, yes. So she started to get to sell bread. And do you know that because she was diligent, Pursuing it because my brother said, if we spend this money, there will be nothing after one week. So why don't we invest it? So they invested it, and you know that the bread multiplied. In three months, she began to she began to sell like five thousand dollar worth of bread. From there, she began to get um she began to get eggs, you know, crates of eggs. And before you know it, got a shop in Obafemi Awolo University. And in one year or two years, this thing multiplied. And my younger brother came up with the idea of risky burger, which is then it's, it's like you take a bread and then you fry egg and you put egg inside the bread, inside the bread, and then you you know it's like you now he, he added some things to the bread and the bread will just be you know the aroma will be calling on all students and before you know it they knew my brother if up till today he has a PhD now so almost completed his PhD but they knew him as risky burger. And that was how the name the risky because, bug. you see an innovation. Innovation because students we always want something they can eat and they go not they, no, students do not want do not like to cook. So he would fry the egg, put it inside the bread, and that was how the business boomed, just increased and expanded out of 800 naira. Hmm. So what I normally say to people is do not wait until you have all the money to commence. Once you have an idea of what you want to do, start small. Think big, but start small. When you start and you get to some level, to some point, nobody, no venture capitalist, no capitalist, no investor, we want to invest in something that will not be profitable. So yes. they want, when you go to pitch to an investor, they will ask you, what have you done so far? They want to see what you are bringing on the table. And once they are able to see some, maybe some data of what you have done in the time past, then they are confident to, have, I mean, to invest their money into your business. So do not wait for a helper to come. You start small wherever you are. And you will see when you believe in what you are doing and with what you are doing is actually meeting needs, then the horn will be blown. And you will see that even do we begin to attract venture capitalists. The Bible says vultures go to where the carcass is. So that is the advice I would give to people. And it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or you're a man. 
Though we might say, well, in the time past, that may, maybe capitalists or invest, investors tend to believe more in men. But it, everything is changing now. That's why you have so many big entrepreneurs today, women entrepreneurs, who are making it, who are, in fact, who are succeeding so much in the business world. But my advice to someone today is do not wait for that big capital. That's part of the training I give to people. Do not wait for that big capital to come. Please start wherever you are. Start small. Even if you are, let's say for instance, you want to provide services. When I was to start my business, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to establish an accredited training center. But I knew I did not have the money to go through all the accreditation with awarding bodies and all. The, I, started as, I started a small tutoring business with a client, just one client. In my first month of starting, just with a client. So that client multiplied, because I gave the client um, a very superb um, service delivery, service. that yeah. client introduced me to another, that was how I started to grow. And in six months, six months, under one year, my center was accredited. I got enough capital for the accreditation. But if I sat back, because I've costed what it, what it would take me to start an accredited training center, and I would say, oh, I don't have the money. Then I, if I sat back to bemoan my fate, I wouldn't have been or gotten to that place that God took me to. So God is looking for you to take the first initial step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. Yeah. So take this, no matter how, how small it is, take the smallest step. Start with one client, start small. And you will see that when you are diligent and you begin to meet needs, you will see that vultures, you know, vultures will not come to you, but I'm talking about those that we want to benefit. <laughs> they, they will be attracted to you. They will be attracted to you. I so think one of the, thank you, ma'am. I think one of the key uh, um, elements or key ingredients is what you just said. It's this ability to, number one, think big starts to start small. But number two, you know, the Bible said, do not despise the days of small beginnings. Of small beginnings. And, and make Though your beginning be small. Be small. Or so latter end shall greatly increase. So God recognizes small beginnings. Exactly. But more than that is the issue of consistency. Yes. I think a lot of people think if I start the business today by next month, I should be buying my book and riding flying first class. And I think it's oh that process. I think we should go back and talk about, you know, you said about process. If we can just look at the processes, the, the different stages of, of entrepreneurship, if you can just speak on, on the process for us, because I think that's equally important. All right. Thank you very much. I will, I will talk briefly on the numerpreneurship process. What I teach students, I mean, numerpreneurship students, the process of numerpreneurship. And um, mm. that process, I would look at it, it involves seven stages. The first okay. stage is the incubation stage. At the incubation stage, you know, everybody goes through this incubation stage when the idea is not yet clear to you. There are so many things that fly, so many things that pass through your mind. Everything looks like it but you are yet to actually pinpoint the exact idea that God, I mean, God has designed for you. So you get this idea today. Some people come to me, they said, oh, in a month I get like four or five ideas. I get 10 ideas. You know, it's not every idea that is profitable. But if you sit down very well, you'll be able to see when you are patient. The Bible says in stillness and in quietness lies your strength, your confidence. When you sit still, and you ruminate and you think and ponder and meditate and reflect on the strength of each idea. There's every possibility you'll be able to pinpoint the right idea. And I always liken the incubation stage to the stage, to the, the stage of the preformed act. When we you know the, the book of Genesis, chapter one, the Bible says, and in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, said, but the earth was without form and void. So the pre stage, the preformed art was a stage of, you know, void of uh, what is a formless. It was a formless stage. And the Bible says that and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness means ignorance, you know, um, lack of help. Lack of knowledge, lack, lack of, of clarity. I mean, lack of clarity. So 
And the Bible says that immediately after the Lord saw the, um, the darkness, said the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That was the brooding stage. Brooding stage, thinking, well, okay, what will I do? I am confused. But in your confusion, the first stage is to sit down and actually articulate what God is saying to you. Because the spirit, the Bible says in Job 32.8, there is a spirit in man. So God seeks to communicate ideas because needs will always come. And inspiration will come as an answer to needs. So when you get your inspiration, it's an answer towards needs that are rising somewhere. So the first stage is the incubation stage. Be calm. Make sure that you understand the idea very well. Then the second stage is the conception stage. When that is the stage, I would like it to the stage of conception when sperm and ovum fertilize and a baby is formed. That is when your spirit comes to the point of understanding of the idea or the inspiration that God is giving to you. Because we all get inspired every day. When you go, you see things, you get inspired. But the problem with many people is what you what they do with the inspiration. Some throw the inspiration to the trash can while others pursue it. You know, so when you conceive an idea, which is the second say conception, that is not it. Now you understand, okay, this is the idea because you have sat down to ruminate, to reflect. Many of us are lazy when it comes to meditation. Many of us are lazy when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to sitting still and understanding. You know, or articulating our vision very well. We are very lazy, but it's important if you have to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are people that sit still, that understand what they are doing. All right? So when you move from the stage of conception, that is the stage of basic understanding, you move to the third stage, which is nurturing. Nurturing. And what do you nurture? Or how do you nurture? Okay, now you understand the idea because you have pondered on it, you have reflected on it, and you, I mean, you you, you craft it, you understand it, you apprehend it. Now you want to think, okay, what, what step do I take? And that's where some people also miss it. Nurturing means you take steps for that to research, to get trained in that area, to know more about that business, that area of business, that area of ministry. That idea that is given to you, you take steps. Maybe you seek for mentorship, you seek for people who are in that line. But I would say to you, be careful of who you sell your ideas to. Because there are dream killers, there are people who look at you and think, oh, that is, uh, that is out of the ordinary. Oh, they can't match you on that idea. They look at you and they look at the idea, they see there is no correlation. In fact, the standard deviation is very far. So they try to tell you that look, <laughs> maybe you should maybe you should lower it down, maybe you should do it this way, you know. And Bring then it down a little bit. <laughs> so you need to be careful at your nurturing stage. Who do you go to? And do not over nurture because you know, I always give when I train people on these steps, I always give the illustration of a tender plant in the book of Isaiah 52, verse 2 says it shall grow before you like a tender plant and when you see a tender plant that notion is a tender plant you don't you can't say that this is what this plant will look like it's very small you can't actually say this is the fruit that will come from it just by looking at it but when you nurture it the amount of water you pour on a tender plant determines whether that plant will survive or not That's like right. for instance a tender plant if you take a pocket full of water you are killing that. <laughs> you will kill the plant. So I always, I always show my hand a handful. I mean, because as small as the plant is, the, the amount of water you pour must be very small. I mean, you are tendering to it bit by bit. You are not churning it. So not churning comes from training, from seeking for advice. I mean, I mean, examining it, pondering on it more, praying about it, all these things. When you go from the stage of nurturing, when your idea matures to a stage, then you come to the stage of birth. I would say birth, which business people call launching. Launch. You don't, you don't launch your idea. I always advocate for launching, whether it's ministry or business. Because launching will give a firm footing to your business. You are telling everybody, this is what I do now. For instance, if you call people to come and launch your business, um, you will be careful about what you do with it because you don't want to tell people in the future that, sorry, that was a mistake, I've closed it down. So that is why your nurturing should be a, the stage that you are too sure that this is what you want to go into. 
then you come to that batting stage. I encourage you when you when you have nurtured your business, make sure that you you arrange a day that you are going to launch it. Let people know. Let there be a gathering that you tell people this is what I do. So launching, commissioning, whatever it is that you call it, but that will come at the nurturing stage. You have been giving people a tip of a nice bag. You know, you've been meeting needs bit by bit with that product, with that service, with that gift. So people already are familiar or aware of what you do. So at the launching stage, these are the people that we come and testify and say, well, 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 thank God today she's launching her business, have benefited from this, she helped me, you know, so, 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 and so. Then you give it a name. The fifth stage is naming. You give your business a name. And I always say to people, do not try to coin names for yourself. Don't just go and look for names and give. Your names must depict the purpose of the business. Must depict the purpose of the business. So when you give names, names can be given before birth. Some of us, at the stage of inspiration, God will have given us what to call. Like, become a better man now. I know that Mr. Dissu would have gotten this name maybe a long time ago before he started, you know, the series. So you can get names or after birth, you can get names. Now, the next stage is growth. When you have the birth, you have the naming, you are already looking at the business. And you are looking at what you're doing. The next stage is your consistency stage. Where you have to be tenacious. You have to be diligent. You have to consistently pursue, you know, what... I mean, consistency means that you are al always doing it. You are always doing it. Through thick and thin, whether it's raining or it's shi sun is shining, whatever circumstance, you are doing it. You are doing it. Whether it's bringing in front now or it's not, you are doing it. Because a day is coming when you are going to break through. And for everyone, please, growth is different. For instance, when we give back to children, they don't all work the same time. They don't all grow teeth at the same time. So you cannot say somebody started their business last year, today they are riding limousine or whatever, and you now think, what's wrong with my business? Maybe I'm in the wrong business. No. That's why we say at the conception stage, be sure that this is what you want to go into. And everybody's growth stage is different. Like the, the story of the Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to, to grow. We are asked, many farmers would have, would have planted and harvested severally during this period. But they, they will be making jest or making fun of the Chinese bamboo farmer. So you might not know your own business might be like the Chinese bamboo tree, but be consistent. And that is the growth. Always looking for strategies to grow your business. Go from further training, continuous professional development, join business networking groups talk about it talk 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 about it wherever you go let people know that this is what you do this is what you stand for if you invite me to your program or to a birthday party before i talk before i even speak two words no matter not she will come out because this is who i am this is what i do so continue to blow your horn blow your horn until the, you come to that point of breakthrough and the last stage is the adversary that is the seventh stage what what everybody looks forward to in fact, some people want to move from incubation to others. Yeah, or they want to move from conception to others. No. God is a God of process. And God is not a magician. He is a God of process. You have to pass through this process in order to be able to enjoy others. Even God, while giving us Jesus, Jesus passed through the process before God now gained us as his children. So God is not, there is no exception with you. You need a lot of perseverance, a lot of patience, a lot of faith, a lot of courage, a lot of boldness for entrepreneurship to work. But when the harvest comes in, then you will know, you know, people will begin to celebrate you. People will begin. So that's why they always say success is like an iceberg. You only see the, 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 the top. You don't see the bottom. You don't see a lot of disappointments, a lot of no's, a lot of a lot of failures, a lot of crying, a lot of weeping, a lot of I want to quit, I want to stop. A lot of things that would have gone on the ground. But when people now see that you're successful, they now say, oh, you're lucky. So that is why we encourage you. Entrepreneurship process, numerpreneurship process involve these seven stages. And in fact, if you come to class, maybe if you're privileged to attend our classes, you will see, we will go into it, I mean, a more, um, in, a, in a deeper way for you to understand what is involved at every stage. But that's just briefly the seven stages that I teach people on the entrepreneurship process. Wow. Wow. 
You see, I told you. I told you she's, she's a firebrand. Wow. So the seven stages, just for, for, for summary sake, first stage is incubation. Second stage is conception. Third stage is nurturing. Fourth stage is birth or launching. The fifth one is naming. The sixth one is growth, where consistency comes into play. And then finally, is the harvest stage. Yeah. Wow. Well, Give God uh, the glory. We, we, it's, whew, okay. I think we have so we, we definitely have a blueprint that we can all take away now to use not just for uh, your business, but even for your ministry, for anything in life. Not it doesn't even have to be business or ministry. Even your life, the, the management of your life, and follow this same process, the same seven steps that we've just been given here, so that you can make something out of your life. Ma, before we close, we want to know more about, can you tell us more, please, about the training, where it is, when it is, how to get involved, how to contact you, and all of that, because if what you've heard tonight is just uh, a surface, touch or just scrapping the, scrapping the, surface, <laughs> the surface, then we, we want to know more. Can you tell us, please, how what the process, not the process, when it is the next one, where it is, how people can be involved or get in touch with you, please. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, we, the, the training, we normally organize it for four days. We have three levels. We have the foundation certificate course in numerpreneurship studies. We have the leadership and management certificate in numerpreneurship studies. And we have the advanced leadership certificate in numerpreneurship studies. So each of these is run over a period of four days. So the foundation level, well, some of the things we've mentioned tonight are at the foundation stage. Because when you come to leadership, you can't say you're a leader if you have not yet started and grown something. You know, so that is why we not talk about the leadership stage or the advanced leadership stage. But for the foundation stage, um, we are starting, we normally run it uh, for a period of four days, Wednesday to Saturday, once a month. But for those who do not or who cannot take time off work, we are starting a 10-month course next year, starting from February, the first Saturday of every month, February to November. Because at the Institute, we normally, after you finish and then you go through some continuous professional development, we organize graduation, you know, <laughs> for you. And so just um, to tell you, the courses are free. As the Lord is a ministry, and the Lord has said to us that we have to provide it for free for believers, for Christians. So it is free um, to the glory of God because we have a lot of um, volunteers, those who have passed through the course, who are now teachers, who are teaching at the Institute. So the, we are going to start a new one, a new um, session from February to um, November next year. And it's going to be once a month, the first Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, and that will lead us to leadership certificate course. So not just the foundation, because it's going to be for 10 months. So one Saturday a month. The venue is at Lee Green. Lee Green, Lee Center, Lee Green, Unit 29. And Lee Green is, um, the postcode is SE128SS. SE128 Sierra Sierra. So Sierra Echo 12. Eight Sierra Sierra. So that is the postcode. And then um, to contact me, you can write to me at info at domain.org. Info, I N F O, at So domain, D O M I N T dot org. Info at domain.org. So that is um, if you want to know more about the number fellowship training and uh, also, if you want to call, my number is um, plus four four seven eight four six eight one six five nine zero. So that is the number to call. And uh, we also uh, provide this. Can we have? Okay. 
seven eight. Yeah. Four six. Eight one. Yeah. Yeah. Six five nine zero. Yeah. Yeah. So and we also have single units. Like for instance, we have single units we provide uh for um church workers, stewards, because we train people on purposeful Christian stewardship. So we, we train church workers, Christian leaders. And if you have, or maybe Christian organizations, if you have a group, you want us to come and provide this training. So, so we have single units like self-discovery units, numerous process of self-discovery. We have emotional intelligence and personality awareness training for leaders. Because it's important for leaders to know what we call emotional intelligence and so that they'll be able to manage the people under them. So we have several training, single units that we provide for church leaders or church workers. So if you want us to come to your church, maybe one day, two days, three days, you can write to us and let us and let us know. Um, have a so website. No. The website is www.domit.org. Domit.org. And then my Facebook uh, page, a lot of information you can find on the Facebook page. If you want to connect, it's Dotunologwebi, Dotunologwebi, or Domit Numa Pinochet Center. So you can, you, if you want to know the latest about our products, about our services, about what we do, so and to become part of it, you can, you always have all this on um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all these platforms, social pat platforms. <laughs> I'm sure if we, if we, if, if time is not an issue, we could be here for another hour or two just really digging into this. Ma, we are so grateful. Deep We're so down. grateful for, for the time you have set aside to be with us tonight, but also for the willingness and the, the, the love in your heart to share freely with us everything that you've covered tonight. I mean, we've we've gone from Bible to business to training to leadership to everything. It has been an empowering night. Uh, just last thing before we go, because you you mentioned this at the beginning, and I just think it would be good if we can just for one or two minutes talk about this. Titles 2345 project. What is that about? Um, thank you, sir. It's um it's a ministry um that has been set up for women. And so um Titus is, is taken from the Lord told me from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. That's where you find Titus 2, 3, 4, 5. It's like Titus chapter 2, verses 3, 4, and 5. So the ministry is um targeted at women, and we have four groups, uh, four women groups inside that ministry. We have the maidens, that is those who, are, we, we call them the four M's, the maidens, the masters, the models, and the mentors or matrons. So the maidens are those who, I mean, young ladies who are preparing for marriage. So we train them on, because we know that when people go for marriage counseling in churches, it's not that in-depth. And when people get into marriage, they now discover, oh, this is what it is. Oh, many people have come back and say, is this what I mean, if this is marriage, what is all this stuff about getting married and getting married? You know, so we give them <laughs> the curriculum of what to expect in marriage and also to prepare them in terms of developing entrepreneurship and spirit. So know that if you are getting married, you don't just get married because everybody is getting married. You know? In your marriage must be purposeful. So we, we train maidens on that. Then we have the masters. Those, these are those who have, I mean, they're in marriage, maybe for three, five years, and they're beginning to acclimatize themselves to the, 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 the environment. So we still train them. Because some of them still have issues, they are struggling. And so we train them on marital issues, you know, and especially that as a woman, you don't put your life on them. Like some people say, when I want to have children, then I become too grown out by too soon. So that is why we train masters. We train them to be masters of what God has given to them. So children, husbands, even their career and so on and so forth. Then we have the models. 
Mothers are those who are more than 10 years in marriage and they can provide farm counseling and teaching and training to ladies and to pastors. Then we have the mentors. Mentors and mentors are like maybe older women, grandmas. They are in that group. They are older women, grandmas, those that we go to for, you know, timely and wisely intervention. It's only matters of marriage. So the Bible says, let older women teach younger women on how to keep up. And that is why we look at that Proverbs 31. It must be another. So that is what the title of the leaders do. That's what the ministry is for. We encourage women to be business owners, to be career, I mean, to think about their life and not just, not just to put their lives on hold and to prepare them well for marriage. If you are in marriage, maybe you were not prepared. Some of us were not prepared for marriage. We just went to the job. When we got to the job, we were just to be. And then we did it. We are training and building our women to be homekeepers, to be business people, to be, I mean, to be smart women, to be who God has designed them to be, who practically teach them the purpose of the women. Wow. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's a uh, new apprenticeship training. There is titles two, three, four, five. And all of this information, you can access them through the website of, uh, of Dr. Logan, be www.domit.org. You can write to her via the email uh, address info at domit.org. Or she's also willingly and kindly giving us her number. You can contact her on a one-to-one. -one. Just talk to her and let her help you. Mark, on behalf of all of us, men and women, boys and girls, everyone that is on this platform tonight, everyone that will see this program whenever and from wherever they see, they would see. We want to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your, your your free gift because that's what this is about. You have given to us freely and our prayer is that God who who only can reward will reward you abundantly. Thank you so much. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last of the series on women empowerment. We're going to round up uh, one or two more programs this year. But from next year, this platform, we're looking at revamping it and taking a different, uh, different approach. It will still be on the air, but it will looks slightly different from what it is right now and we will communicate that in due time but remember where we started at the beginning of this year look at how many we have how many materials that we have touched that we have seen that we've talked about that we have gone through the number of guests that we have proved them and all of that they have put us in a position where we know that on the 31st of December 2019, we are definitely, without a doubt, better men and better women than we were on the 1st of January 2019. On a personal note, I want to thank all of you that have remained committed, that have remained followers and been part of this platform. It is one thing to have something to say, but the greatest honor is for you to have people who are willing and who are committed week in, week out, to listen to what you want to say, take something away from what you have said. And I do not take that for granted. I appreciate you and I thank you. And I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year in advance. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. We appreciate you. Have a great evening and my regards to the family. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Wow. Well, we're going to round it up now and we'll see you again next week. God bless you. Bye bye.